Sunrise in old Fangok begins with a thousand voices. In that way, it hasn't changed. But when we arrived in the village, the feeling was distinctly different from my last visit a year ago. Where the market was bustling with activity, today it's relatively quiet and very little commerce. Where a year ago, a thousand patients waited for their Kalazar shots under the neem trees, this year only a couple hundred. While some of the decline can be attributed to the natural ebb of the deadly outbreak, it soon became clear that a significant reason for the decline in patients was the lack of food. Olfangak and surrounding villages are in the midst of a famine. This is the dry season, but a few months ago, during the rainy season, the rain fell in biblical proportions and all the crops were killed. From every homestead, we hear the same story. They have no food. With each step they take, hunger is their shadow. This family is gathering leaves from the tho tree. They will cook the leaves for two days to make them palatable. Others will collect water lilies. Leaves and water lilies. On this diet, the people will starve to death. For the people in Jill's clinic, it's only a little better. She has limited supplies, but each patient receives two tablespoons of oil each week. A few cups of grain, something, but not enough. If there's no food in the clinic, people just don't come. Sadly, they stay home and likely die. This is the reality of old Fangok today. The Alaskan Sudan Medical Project is working to change the cycle. We have supported a handful of families who have started gardens along the river. This is the Garden of Tayak. We helped him three years ago with a micro loan for a water pump. Today, I guess he has five acres under cultivation. Man, I am absolutely impressed. We were talking about gardens. This has already become a farm. There's corn, papayas, onions, carrots, mango, bananas, and eggplant. With proper technique, Tayak has demonstrated that gardening can fill the hunger gap. And more gardens are starting. The work is difficult and the tools are the most basic, but we are seeing hope planted along the banks of the Nile River. Just this past week, several gardeners met for prayer at the ASMP compound, and then we distributed seeds. Seeds for gardens, Seeds of hope. There's another kind of hope planted along the river. We took a journey to visit the church at Chotbura. It's a 20 minute boat ride down the river from Old Fangak, and then a right turn into the tall grass along the shore. I don't know how we do where this was. All the trees look the same. After wading in the water and muddy riverbank, we were greeted by the church choir. The congregation at Chotbura saved for four years. A goat here, a cow there, and this past summer they asked ASMP to help build their church. The work was at the hands of Stephen Ayul. I am so happy to have to build the church and I like to help them anything can help community again. Stephen is a Sudanese employee of ASMP. We taught him how to weld. 
And he brought the skills to Chotbura, and today there is a worship service inside the new church at Chotbura. <laughs> Yes, a herd of cows could walk through and a dust storm might kick up. There is work to do, but the congregation is thankful they have a home, God's house in Chakbara. We feel very lucky, very blessed by God to be able to work with you and to help you. We returned to the village a few nights later. We brought with us the Jesus film and all the projection equipment. I love being here. I love bringing the Jesus film equipment to this new church and the people are excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Once wading ashore, an elder from the church asked us to sit. And on the riverbank, he washed our feet. Mm. Clean water, Thank you. gentle hands, and the mud was washed away. As the sun set, we set up the equipment and showed the movie. And while it was projected, the villagers brought us food. Three times. Sorghum and fish, milk and cooked pumpkin. A group facing famine fed us. Our feet were washed and we were fed. This holiday season in remote villages of southern Sudan, people are facing hardships most of us cannot truly understand. Yet, this man told us he is excited for Christmas. Yes, he says, they are hungry, but they will celebrate with great joy the birth of Jesus. You will not find presents under the trees, no counting of the shopping days till Christmas, but in Old Fangok, along the banks of the Nile River, you will find the true meaning of Christmas, a people who celebrate God's gift to all mankind. Just celebration and thankfulness and hope.